What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the show, AFL Podcast. No, AFL po- Footy Podcast. How is everyone? We got the King of the North. G'day. The King of the North. We got Johnny G, <laughs> our, uh, my, my favorite crow supporter. How are you, my friend? I'm your favorite crow supporter. Well, well, you know, well you're I'm one very of them. happy to be here and I'm very thankful for the lovely intro. <laughs> and then we got the man himself, Johnny Carlton, is back ladies and gentlemen welcome man thank you thank you thank you for having me guys we are on the eve of the new season um i'm excited are you guys excited pumped pumped it's gonna be um, it's gonna be massive it is gonna be massive uh look i've yeah i've been watching some of the uh trial games and like we went to the trial game the other day me and the the king and um yeah just watching it was like yeah just got you pumped you know what i mean so really excited um guys do you guys did you guys follow the uh, community series last week i've got the um the scores here guys so we'll go through some of the games quickly just the games that we i went to and we'll talk about carlton as well and the crows but there you go guys so you had collingwood richmond uh 76 to 46 collingwood's way uh, that's probably self-explanatory. Carlton. Let's talk about Carlton, Johnny. Johnny Carlton. Yes. 63 to 101. What happened here? Did you have players out? Because I didn't watch the game. And, um, yeah, tell us what Carlton... What's happening with Carlton this preseason? Look, this year this year was, was really different compared to all the other years, I reckon. Um, as I said, last year I would have... I would have actually thought about pre-season games actually being very important to us to see which players are going to be like how they are after a pre-season. But I just I sat back and just wondered maybe we don't take it as serious as we did all the other years, which is good. Um, now, as I said, it's just more of an insight of the new players. Um, obviously, both teams had a lot of players out. Melbourne didn't have Oliver. Uh, we didn't have Weedering, Walsh, etc. So it was good just to sit back and just enjoy football, not to not to not to panic, not to not to get angry about anything. Just to sit back, just to relax, and just to see a little bit of football and see how we how things are going to go this year. Um, as I said, I Charlie Kern has taken on the vice captaincy role off the off season. Um, and he just looks more smarter down in the forward line, to be honest. Um, he's given Harry Mackay a little bit of more confidence. It didn't show on Wednesday night um, due to his goal kicking. But around the ground, it seems that Harry's more more confident, which I'm very excited for this year. Because obviously, we just we relied on Charlie Kerno a bit more last year than we did with Harry not standing up and not performing as well as we wanted to. Um, so... As I said, and just with with that forward line, it was probably our um, it's probably the the thing that we needed to work on off the off season. It wasn't as damaging as our midfield and our defence. But as I said, to put to get Arazio Fantasia from Port Adelaide was I just feel like it's just a, he's just added another dynamic. And obviously now losing Jesse Motlop, um, he only lasted about five minutes in the first quarter of the practice game. Um, he got a foot injury, so. Um, Losing Motlop now, I reckon it's going to be a big game for Orazio on Friday night against uh, against Brisbane because obviously Brisbane coming off a grand final, they're obviously going to probably be top four again, which is we're going to probably need all our strong players. But as I said, it's going to be hard without Weedering, Walsh and etc. cetera. Um, but it's just, yeah, just excited that footy's back and uh, we can now get along with our lives and start getting angry and happy and crying and all the emotions and um <laughs> and yeah so now nah, as i said it's it was good just to sit back and not not be angry after the game and just look at the stats and go yep yeah. but um yeah look as i said i i real i feel like walsh is going to be very uh very important not there on, um on friday night against brisbane um i just feel like Cripps and hewitt and chera are a bit too slow without walsh I just feel like Walsh is our running midfielder. Um, Doherty goes in there. Doc feels obviously a new role for Doc over the offseason. Obviously, Doherty playing halfback all his life, now going into midfield. Um, so, as I said, it's just good to see players, new players in their new positions. Um, I like the likes of the new Hollands brothers as well. They look good. 
Um, obviously, we can't get Elijah Holland due to our suspension for a couple of rounds as well. But um, as I said, new players in new positions. As I said, it was just good just to sit back and just just watch some football. So, yeah, man. Look, I, I was at Alberton the other on Friday night, and just watching it, like I was standing watching it with uh, the King of the North, and uh, it was awesome, man. Just the just the, the the speed and watching it like really close. It was it was really good. Loved it. Loved it, man. Just the feeling you get. So, it is. So yes. But um, Johnny G, like you went to the Crows game. Now, that was at Richmond Oval. And, yeah, um... yeah. Went. There. Um, I only stayed till half time because I had to go to work. But yeah, same feeling. You know, it's great to see him up close and personal. Um, Rich Richmond grounds like a very you know tight ground, so you're pretty close to the players. Um. Yeah, there's not much to take away. Like, it is pre-season, you know what I mean? And, you, you know, don't really look too much at the score lines. You just – teams are trying to play, you know, certain ways and just trying to figure things out. Uh, obviously, we blew West Coast away in that second half. Um, but I do like the way our midfield is, you know, we're getting a lot of quick players in there. We're, we're rotating some, you know um, – Players through the middle there, Rankin getting some time, Rochelle getting some time, we're looking dangerous. Um, Phil, Phil Fort, he went down with an injury in the game, which is concerning because it was big hopes for him this year. So let's hope he's not out for too long. Um, McElhaney in our in our defence, so he is going to be a star. Um, Curtin, we didn't get to have a look at him. He wasn't playing. Uh, but look, I think there's a lot of goals in our team. Um, we've got a good midfield. We've got a lot of speed. Crows look like they want to play one way, very attacking. Uh, it's good to see Barry back in the squad. He played well. Uh, yeah, look, it's exciting. Like, you know, as you guys said, footy's back. And I think everyone has this really high hope of their team at the start of the year. You know what I mean? Like, this could be our year. You know what I mean? So... I do think the Carlton boys may be thinking that as well. They're, they've got um, a lot of pressure on them with their team this year. A lot of people predicting good things for Carlton. And uh, Adelaide, you know, um, people 50-50 with Adelaide, really, in the eight or not. So uh, I have high hopes for our team. And, um, yeah, it's exciting times. Yeah, man. Let me look. I, I, I agree. I, I, I reckon... Crows are going to be really good this year, um, but I did have Carlton as my premier, Johnny Johnny Carlton. So I had to change it because Johnny G went for 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 Crows as their premier, so I went for Port. But I originally put Carlton as my as my premier, so I really think like they're going to go. At, I reckon they're going to go far this year. Um, if they can get that combo with Harry Mackay and they can get their combo with um uh Kerno, if they can get if they can get those two firing again, especially Harry Mackay, if he can score and kick straight. I'm not sure. Did he score did he, did he hit the, the goals? Yeah, he scored two goals on Wednesday. Yeah. Um obviously he had a really bad shank as well during the second quarter, but um as I said, it's gonna take time. Um yeah. But, um, yeah, as Jesse said, obviously we didn't care about the scoreline, um, as what Johnny G said. We just we just wanted to see how the boys were playing. Um, but as I said, it, there are, there is a lot of concerning signs um, after Wednesday. So yeah, it's a yeah. You never bit... want to see yeah. You don't want to see injuries like you know in those games either. So I know, man. We had in the poor game. Me and the King went. Uh, we'll give you a quick rundown on that one. So. Yeah, the Port yeah. played really well. I mean, they played a really shitty Fremantle side that didn't really do much. Like, their midfield, Frio's midfield was shit compared to... Oh, I mean, Hayden Hayden Young was really good for them. But, yeah. Um, yeah, they weren't... There was nothing special about Frio, so it was not a big test for Port Adelaide on that night. Uh, but I did like, you know, the... Rosie and I saw Horn Francis was really good. Um, Boki had a good game. I did like the the defense with uh, Rada Galera and Elia Ali. I thought they did all right. But as I said, man, they, they're not tested. They're not tested because um, 
you know, that it's not they went up against a good forward line. So the time will come when they go up against you know the the big forwards. But um, yeah, Butters had a scare as well. He rolled his ankle, so that was you know concerning. Everyone held their breath when that happened. But um, look, it was it was good to see that you know they're a lot faster. I liked uh, Zerk Thatcher in the back. Um, and I did like Soldo and Jordan Sweet. Jordan Sweet, um, the Rockman, he's massive, man. He's like bigger than Charlie Dixon. And uh, he really competes really well. But I think Soldo should uh, keep the Ruck position. Uh, you know, I, look, I'm optimistic about that Port Adelaide. I know that you guys think that the, the midfield is not there. But yeah, you're true. Like if, if Butters and Rosie go down... Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be tough. There's not enough depth there, but yeah, we'll see what happens. There, it's going to be it's going to be a tough. But look, there's every team has got their ups and downs, and yeah, it's going to be an interesting season. But uh, King of the North, what do you see of the Port game, man? Because you're there with me. Yeah, it was. Um, they had a a really good run. Um, the coach rotated all of the players really well, and and like. Turned them over quickly, brought them on, brought them off, gave, gave everybody a good run. And, um, yeah, it was just good to see the, the two trying to just get it together. They down the back. Um, it's going to take a few games for them to, to get it together down the back. But I think if the their Port's defence is good, then that's going to be a big a big bonus to, to them. Um, their, their midfield's good. And as, as you say, Johnny, it's um, the forward line's okay. And um, it's just their back line last year, which really let them down. So, um, yeah, if these two can um, really get a get a combination working, then I think they'll they'll do OK. My uh, my interesting game was uh, the Gold Coast, um, the Gold Coast Suns and GWS. Um, GWS just looked outstanding um, against Gold Coast. I was really like in my top eight of I've popped the Gold Coast in there because I think they might do better this year with the, with the new coach, but it was, it was quite disappointing to see how the Gold Coast went. I, I was expecting at least to see something, like, at least show us something that they might have got from the new coach. But uh, I don't know. I don't know whether we're, we're going to see that, but um, GWS, I think uh, are just pretty, pretty outstanding. And um Toby Green's just just a gun, isn't he? So yeah, 100%. that was that was that was good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, guys. Well, look, there was a few other games that did play. I'll just quickly go through them. Um, so yeah, the the, uh, the Brisbane Lions got the chocolates over the Sydney Swans. Uh, the Suns, uh, Gi- Giants beat the Suns. Uh, yeah, Cats had a close one with the, the Bombers. I heard that was a really good game. Obviously, Port beat Frio. Crows smashed Eagles. The Hawks, um, I thought they would be more competitive. I, I think they were in half time and they dropped a lot of players. And then West Bulldogs just ran all, all over them. And then St. Kilda and North Melbourne. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was a bit of a massive hit. Now, do you guys actually see that hit on... Um, on uh, Dice him. Yeah, Dice how him. bad was that? I mean, I've got the footage here. I'm not footage. I've got the picture. Here. You won't, you guys won't be able to see it, but I mean, he takes him out. Uh, if Sam Powell Pepper's hit on Keane was four weeks, this has to be at least six to seven, uh, my has opinion. To, has to be. Has to be. Been, you know, over 10 weeks just because it's in a yeah. friendly sort of, and uh, he just lined him up. He just... Yeah, it was a bad bump. It was really bad. It was bad, man. And, you know, SPP, for me, like, maybe because I'm biased, I still think he got suspended. But I think four weeks on SPP, like, I reckon there's a two or three weeker, not four weeks. I just, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that was a four weeker? I think Sam Power Pepper is known to be a bit rough. And, you know, I think he's had a build up in the bank. And that's why he got four weeks. He's known as the bad guy. Yeah, I know, but he shouldn't get four weeks just because of that, man. Like, you know, I understand he got knocked out. Like, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he shouldn't have got weeks. Like, 
at all. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I just think four weeks is a like a lot. Like two to three, I could understand. I but think yeah, we're four. gonna. I think we're going to get ridiculous results this year with AFL now concerned about concussion rules and everything like that. Um, the only reason I thought San Paolo Pepper got four weeks was because of the AFL and they want to shut down on concussion rules and they want to be more serious about it and all that type of stuff. I uh, There will be a lot of fans that will be angry about results that go this year. Um, there, there could be There could be hits that should be one week, but they'll get three weeks just to just to make sure that the players know that it's going to be a bit more now serious if you're going in for a bump. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because obviously now with the anger spray, Shaw retiring before the games, uh, before the season starts and everything like that. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like there's going to be ridiculous results during the year and a lot of people are not going to be happy with it, but it's the AFL trying to be safe and make sure concussion rules and, priorities and all that type of stuff with the head, with the head knocks and everything. So, yeah, with, if Sam Powell Pepper got four weeks where he's hit on Keen, I, I doubt Webster will get any less than six weeks. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't see it. I, I can see him getting at least six or seven. So, yeah. It's a great, great point about the Angus Brayshaw thing. That's, that's spot on, you know. They're, they're going to be, they're going to be right on top of things now. So, and his, his retirement's been the catalyst, hasn't it? So, um, yeah. yeah. As I said, look, obviously they we want AFL to be tough and everything like that, but obviously it's 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 now with the concussion protocols and everything like that. Now, obviously, I think I think if you get concussed, you miss now two games. I don't think it's nine days now. I think they've extended it now. Oh, really? So it, yeah, they've extended it. So I think you you do miss a game, even though if you have the buy next week, I think you still miss a game. Um. So with that extended as well, and now players actually figuring out they're gonna they're gonna realize when they get if if they hit someone they're gonna realize that it's gonna be more serious than they than they thought it would. So yeah, no, I mean like it's it's a big problem, uh, you know, especially you know uh, players from years ago that are are sick now, you know, from it. So I understand it's a it's very serious. So. But you, know, you never want to see anyone get knocked out like that, you know. It's not nice. Yeah. They they said it would be between 16 to 18 days as concussion protocol. So oh, okay. it's basically yeah. two weeks and, and nearly two and a half weeks. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, as I said. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, collisions happen. It's a collision game. So, you know, it's going to happen. Like, sometimes accidents are going to happen. So oh. what can we do? But... Look, we got games coming up now. Before we go into the games, I want to know your thoughts, guys, on the opening round fixture. Like, now, I was under the impression, right, the NRL was going to Vegas, right, which they are. And the reason why we're doing an opening round is because the AFL wanted to go into their territory and be there when they're not there, right? Now, the Correct. AFL, now the NRL has already gone to Las Vegas, right? Really gone to Las Vegas this week. So next week when the footy's on, they're back. NRL's back in Sydney. They're back in Queensland. I don't see what the point of this opening round is. Guys, give us, is there an explanation? Because I don't know. Well, it, it's laughable if um, there's going to be six NRL games and NRL doesn't pull great numbers to the games anyway. So a lot of NRL supporters watch it on telly um, and they you get your six to ten to fifteen thousand to the game. So whether you know they get more at the bigger games, then they might, but um, they're not going to get going into playing at grounds where they can't like be a major ground to play at, they're not going to get that many supporters going to the game, which is a problem. And they've just, from what I can see, they've just, they've just stuffed up their weeks, I think. So yeah, it's just a big blue from the AFL. I feel like, I feel like they've just wanted footy to be more across interstate 
and that's why they've done these rounds and type of stuff. Like obviously they tried gather round last year and it was it was a success. So obviously they've done it again this year as well. Uh, but as I said, four games in a round where it's none in Melbourne. I just I just don't understand why just the four games. Why just you just go a whole round and let every team play? Because I just feel like. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's still twenty four rounds. I, I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm wrong about that. Is it twenty four rounds including opening round? Or I could be wrong. I think it's now twenty five, including think, opening I, round. Yeah, I think they. Yeah, I think it is twenty five because I think those teams that are playing this week will have a buy around round five or something. Round two. Round two. Oh, round two. Okay, sorry. Round two. Twenty four. So, yeah. Plus round zero, 24 plus round zero. Okay, so, so yeah, there'll be 25 games this year. So, yeah, as I said, obviously there's going to be a longer season and and all that type of stuff. But for four games only, I just I think it's just an L. I think AFL just took a big L on this. Mm. Um, as I said, just... Yeah, because you yeah, know what, man? What, what, R- R- Richmond Carlton, that's... I, I know Richmond Carlton's the first game. And uh, now it's not. Like, it's just weird. It's not. It's not about. It's not about that. It's just about how they've just decided just to choose eight teams out of nowhere and just go. Oh yeah, we'll put these eight teams. You've just got footy back, and now in two weeks, all those teams are going to be gone again. And it's like, well, you've seen your team for two weeks, and then you you have to miss out again for oh, a whole yeah. week. Mm. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, I just don't understand why it's just. Yeah, it's just it's. It's an L from the AFL. I don't like it. I hope this is the first time and only time. Um, I hopefully it doesn't come back after this. Yeah, it's... yeah, it's definitely an L from the AFL. Like you know, it's sort of it's, it is round one to be fair. Round zero, like I don't even know why they even call it round zero, but it's just <laughs> you know what I mean. You, you're supposed to watch your team on the first week of AFL, and like I have to wait. I, you know, I, I watch the games anyway, but my pros will. We'll play the week after. It's just like, you know, should play all in one week, you know, kick kick all the teams off in the first week, you know, and then, you know, sort out the buys down the track. But, um, yeah, it's kind of weird how they've done the buy system. You like think- Johnny Carlton says, you know, Carlton missed out two weeks. you got Gold Coast missed out in three weeks. you got, yeah, it's just a weird system this year. Maybe they're just trialling it and um, see what the feedback is from the fans and stuff at the end of it. Does it give any team an advantage or disadvantage, you guys think? Or is it, you know, is it just, know, it should be fine? Just say clubs are going to run, right? Um, it always tends, like, when you come back from a buy, you kind of come back worse off normally. Mm. So it could disrupt someone's start of the season, it's really. Um, it could. You know, so I don't understand it. But, yeah, I just think it could interrupt a few a momentum of a team. So, yeah. As I said, if you, as an example, if you've got Brisbane who are really good and they start two and zero, and then they get a buy and they come back and they've lost their first round, they, it's all these other teams that they're versing have only had basically not even had a buy. They're coming off a game last week and they're starting their season and they're going to play the round after and they won't get a buy till round eleven. You know what I mean? Like the actual normal AFL season, so it will affect teams. Um, I, I reckon it will affect all eight teams um, because obviously, it might, if obviously if you go zero and two before the round round two, then it might help some teams as well. It could benefit some teams, but it could it could make some teams um, disadvantaged and all that type of stuff. It's just yeah, it's terrible. But, um, <laughs> I can't believe terrible. it. I can't believe it. Disgrace. Yeah. Disgrace. Anyway. Disgrace. Also, pretty much. The- if you look at our teams, Chris, um, really we only get one buy for the year because our season starts in two weeks and we've only got one buy after that because, you know, really this first round's not really a buy for us because we haven't had, we haven't started yet. But yeah. let's say these eight teams that are playing this week, they've pretty much got two buyers to contend with. They've got to stop and start twice. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, yeah it's weird. It's... It's pretty unfair. So it could it could work for some clubs, like Johnny said, but it could be. A... Mm. It's interesting, but yeah, it's I don't yeah, it's, I, I agree with you guys. I think it's unnecessary, unnecessary. But anyway, it is what it is. And uh, look, we do have four games coming up. So and yeah, here they are, guys. So we got 
Sydney versus Melbourne. That's at the SCG Thursday night. We got Brisbane versus Carlton at the Gabba. We got Gold Coast Richmond at uh, Heritage Bank Stadium, which is in Gold Coast. And then we got GWS versus Collingwood at Giants Stadium. We'll start off with the first game, uh, Sydney versus Melbourne, guys. I mean, aren't these the hardest, the hardest rounds to tip? Like, because you don't know how they're going to perform, who's going to perform. You got new players coming in. It's just hard to like pick a winner, you know. Uh, look, SCG, you've got all these new players through with Sydney. Melbourne has had a really rocky, really rocky. Um, Pre, I don't know, like just off season, like a lot of shits happen at that club. For me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Sydney just because home ground, and I think you know those new recruits have got a, a point to prove. And um, yeah, I think Melbourne's gonna have a rocky start. What do you guys reckon? Who wants to go, Johnny Carlton? No, all right. Um, uh, I I reckon. Look, as I said, it's it's obviously very hard to tip this week. Um, but obviously, both teams starting fresh and everything like that. Obviously, there's points on the line now. I think Melbourne will win. Um, I feel like Sydney. I feel like Sydney are going to need some time to get through everything. Um, obviously, Parker and Adams not playing the first couple of weeks is obviously. I feel like Sydney's midfield is just a bit. A bit too weak for Melbourne. I reckon Gorn's back to his best. I, re- I reckon Gorn's been... I don't think Gorn has stopped. I reckon Gorn's probably one of the best ruckmen in the comp. Um, Melbourne's kids have really excited me in the last two weeks as well. I reckon Melbourne's kids have more have stand out more than Sydney has. Um, obviously, I did watch a little bit of the Sydney-Brisbane game last week. It's just no one excited me in the Sydney game except for Brody Grundy, to be honest. I reckon Grundy did play a really good game for Sydney, but I just feel like it's just the same old Sydney last year. And obviously, I was there for Sydney's last game last year against Carlton in the Elimination Final. Um, they don't have a much leadership as what Melbourne does, and I just feel like Melbourne's leadership will just um, on top of Sydney. And I just feel like Melbourne. I won't say it's going to be a close game. I reckon Melbourne might get Melbourne might win by about four goals, about twenty four points. Um, but I just feel like Gorn, Oliver, Petrarca, they're just going to do their thing. Um, and I just feel like Melbourne will get the win over Sydney. Johnny G, yes. what do you reckon? Um, so is that confirmed that Oliver's going to be in this week, Johnny? Yeah, confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, because um, there's been a lot of talk. He's been playing really well in the twos. Um, we haven't seen him in the preseason yet, really. I think the match before, maybe. But um, this is a tough game. In the betting, the... The bookmakers can't split these two guys. They're paying a dollar ninety two each. So I can see Chris and you know Johnny playing tipping different other teams because it's going to be that tight. Um, if this was in Melbourne, I'll probably pick Melbourne instantly. I reckon they probably would win because I think Sydney, obviously, new Ruckman coming in, a um, couple of their key players like like Parker and Adams, and even Mills is out at the moment. So they're missing a few through that midfield. Um, I mean, Melbourne looked good against Carlton last week. I know it's a preseason game. Uh, and Gorney, as mentioned, he just dominated. So, um, I'm, t- geez, I'm tipping Melbourne in like, yeah, tight one. I reckon, I reckon just, I think they're in better stead at the moment than Sydney. So, Melbourne in a tight one. All right, King of the North, what do you reckon? Do you reckon... Do you agree with me with Sydney, or do you go with the the two Johnny boys? Uh, the Mel- going for Johnny, Melbourne. Johnny Ca- Johnny Cullen is very convincing to uh, change is. my mind. But, I'm uh, change my <laughs> mind, man. <laughs> but uh, I'll stick. I'll stick with Sydney. I did. Uh, I have tipped them, so I'll stick with my tip and um, just go with the new players going into Sydney. New Ruckman. Uh, hopefully, yeah. His his ruck work is gonna. Uh, get that midfield uh, going. So we'll just have to see. They seem to be fresher. Um, bringing those new young players in gives Sydney a bit of a new lease on life. So, and mainly just being at home. So I'll just um, I'll just go with uh, with Sydney in this one. 
All right. Two no two. worries. Yeah. There you go. So Sydney 2-2. Two, two. All right. Next game, guys. Um, let's have a look. So it is... It's the big... Fr- uh, look, this is the... Uh, this is going to be an interesting one because uh, we've got the two Carlton supporters here. But Brisbane versus Carlton, it's the rematch of the prelim. It's at the Gabba again. Can Carlton go there and right the wrongs of last year? Can they... I mean, Brisbane's a force. Did they lose any games last year in Brisbane? I don't think they did. Did they lose anything? I don't think they had. So, oh, man, it's going to be a tough ask, but... My heart is saying Carlton, but my brain is saying Brisbane. I want Carlton to win, man. As you know, I really do. Because I, I, I can't stand. I'm not a big Brisbane fan. I can't. I'm not, I can't stand them. So, you know what? I'm going to go with my heart. Carlton to win. They're going to shock the world on Friday night, and Brisbane will be a bit of a hangover after the grand final. Now, I'm not saying they're going to fall off a cliff or anything. Brisbane are going to be up there the pointy end, don't worry. But, yeah, I think Carlton will start the season strong. I think I've, I've heard a lot of their training and, yeah, what yeah. Vossi's been doing with them um, in the preseason has been amazing. So, Carlton's from here, guys. What do you guys reckon? I'm looking at you, Carlton, fellas. Johnny Gull, what do you reckon? Um, all right, so Johnny Carlton has made a new thing this year. It's a bold call for the week. Um, <laughs> oh, and my go. bold call is that I reckon Brisbane are going to win by 40 plus. Oh. <laughs> I, I have no. I have no faith in Carlton after the last two weeks. I feel like Brisbane are just too good at the Gabba. And going going to oh. Brisbane last year... And seeing how they play at the Gabba is... They're just another breed there. Um, They were obviously undefeated all season last year, and I just reckon they're going to continue. Carlton, they looked slow. Without Walsh, without Wiedering, without Motlop, there's there's a lot of injuries down at Carlton, and I just feel like it's just... Brisbane's just going to take it away. Uh, I just feel like Neil Dunkley and all those type of boys are just going to dominate... Um, I feel like Brisbane's forward line is going to have a party this week. I just feel like, I just don't feel like without Jacob Wiedering down there, I just feel like Lewis Young and Brody Kemp cannot hold that back line. Um, I know it's being harsh and everything like that. I just don't think Cripp is there yet. Um, obviously, it's, it, it looks good that Cripper doesn't have any tape on his body. He looks fit and healthy. Um but I just feel like Brisbane's just going to steal the show here and they're just going to come out and they're going to make a statement for 2024 and they're going to show why they were in the grand final last year. And I just feel like they're going to blow Carlton away and, yeah, it's just it's not going to be a good day for Carlton. And I reckon Brisbane by 40-plus. So I just don't feel like Carlton will be anywhere close during the whole game. So I hate to admit it, but... After seeing the last two weeks, I obviously looking at um, not looking at scoreboards and just looking at the way Carlton play. They haven't impressed me as what they have in the last couple of years, and I uh, just obviously injuries aside, I just just yeah, it's just we're not there yet, and I reckon it's gonna. I reckon Carlton might take a a bit of a different road this year. I reckon we will start slow, but then obviously end well, and start our season halfway through the season. If it's too late, it's too late. I know everyone has Carlton for top four. Um, that's I don't I don't have Carlton for top four. Um, but, um, yeah, I just feel like Brisbane by 40 plus. So that's my bold call of the week. Well, I'm going to ask go. you, la- I'm going to ask you later. Who's your, who's your tip for the flag and all that kind of stuff. So well, before we finish, I want to have all those uh, questions answered, but, yeah, that's that was interesting. Interesting take. I didn't I didn't expect that one. That was out of the blue. But all right, Johnny G, do you who are you going for, man? Yeah, look, um, I think this game couldn't come at a worse time for Carlton. Really, yeah, uh, they they're going to obviously to gather. It's hard to win there. Um, you talk about the hangover. I believe that Brisbane are going to be hungry this year after last year. Um, and as Johnny Carlton said, the injuries are going to hurt Carlton, uh, especially in this game. Uh, I think Weedering's a huge one, especially Walsh as well. 
Uh, look, Colton never set the world on fire in the preseason. Try not to go on those games, but you cannot be confident in tipping Carlton at the gab of what we've seen so far. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, Brisbane for me, I don't know about over 40, you know, it's it's, it's quite harsh. It could, the scoreline's a bit tough, but I think Brisbane will win. I think they win, they win easy, but I don't think we won't be 10 goals. It will, it will be maybe three or four. So something like that. So Carlton by, you know, three or four goals. All right, King of the North. The King of the North! Um, yeah, I agree. Um, Fagan's got a point to prove. They might even go undefeated, try and go undefeated this year all the way through. Um, they, he, I'm, I'm sure he wants a, he wants a premiership. So um, they just they just lost some games away from home um, last year, which which was, you know, caused them a bit of grief. But, um, yeah, as... As both of you have said, the beat, tipping against them and stupidly last year I tipped against them at home. And, um, yeah, I, I won't be doing that again this year. So, yeah, it'll be Brisbane for me as well. Uh, just a quick question before we move on. I, I don't know. I didn't watch the Brisbane game. Did Tom Doty play for Brisbane over the weekend? Or is he still injured? I think question. he's still injured. I don't think he played. So I, I obviously look. I felt I felt like Brisbane wouldn't get a rich replacement, but I just uh, watching Tom Doty for Adelaide, he's a star, and I reckon he's going to be a very good halfback. I just feel like Brisbane's just going to go another step this year, as what King of the North said. I just I don't see them losing a lot of games this year. I reckon I reckon they're going to be minor premiers from the start. I just I think they're going to be on top of the ladder, and I just don't see anyone. I, I could see Collingwood nearly close taking them off the top of the ladder, but I just feel like Brisbane's going to hold that number one spot for a very long time. Mm. Yeah, Duda didn't play, and yeah, I did tip Brisbane to be minor premiers in my predictions. Um, I don't think yeah. there's going to be a hangover. They, they're going to start well, and uh, it's unfortunately Carlton are in their first uh, victim coming up. Yep. Well, I'm the only crazy guy going for Carlton, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm hoping they win, man. But I don't know. We'll see. It's crazy. Anything can happen. Anything listen, can happen. Like... Listen. Pre, don't, sometimes preseason is not a good thing to look at. I know you look at all the stats and everything. It doesn't look good. Last year, we were sh- like Port Adelaide was shit, and we finished... Well, I, after the finals finished fifth, but we had a good run last year. So, but go, go, going to open training yesterday and actually seeing them right there without no pressure and everything, and their little scrap match between tops and no tops, it's just they look slow, Chris. They 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 oh, look really? slower than they have in the previous oh, yeah. years. Like I was confident Carlton Richmond last year round one. I was really confident going into round one. Um. Just Acres is not there this year. I don't know something's going with Acres in the off season. He just doesn't. He doesn't look confident. Maybe his arms. Maybe he's nervous about his arm. Um, I just feel like Cripps is not there. We're 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 too much pressure with the ball. Uh, we're not making the right decisions. Um, going in forward, going like hitting in forwards, just not there yet. Um. Obviously, Walsh is just that run and carry, and Wiedering's just that like standout in the defense, and just the defense just looks lost. Like it was basically the VFL versus the AFL, and the VFL kids looked very like they looked better than the whole Carlton defense. Like the yeah. only two boys, the only two boys I could tell that looked actually good in the defense was Sard and McGovern. Mm. Apart from Sard and McGovern, the the whole defense just looked they didn't look like they knew what they were doing, well, and you. you that was against VFL kids. You're going up against Brisbane who have Charlie Cameron, Joey Danaher, Rayner, McCarthy. Mm. Like, yeah, we're all against up these boys. And I just, yeah, it's just, it's going to be true. And I reckon just Brisbane's midfield is just going to kill us. And the ball's going to be spent a lot in the forward line. And we're going to, they're going to ask a lot. Like, I mean, a lot for our defenders. Mm. And without weedering there, it's just, ever since I said, it's just, yeah. Yeah, weedering no is a no leadership down there after weedering. Obviously, if Doherty was in there, you would have put Doherty in the leadership. But he hasn't played backline all see all preseason. He's been in the midfield the whole preseason. There's just no leadership down there. Like you've got Newman, who's probably our oldest player on the list, playing backline. But he's just 
I don't see new Nui as a, as a leader as what Weidering and Walsh and Ch- Cripps and all that type of guys are. I just, I just feel, I have very very worries about our defense. So yeah, just. Um, is Fisher a big loss for you, uh, Johnny Carl? Look, seeing Fisher again on playing with North Melbourne on the week uh, yesterday. Look, Fisher looked toward thirty six disposals. Like uh, that's the most he's ever got. Like. It, he he barely got the twenty mark in Carlton. He just looked like a new guy off half back. Um, mm. Would I say he's a loss? I don't think so. I think Sard and all those types. If we, if Zachy Williams stays fit, I don't, I feel like Zachy Williams and Sard are probably our best half back. And I don't I don't feel like Fisher is um is big of a loss. It's just yeah, with Weedering going down and Wash going down, I just feel like those have our those boys were our big loss. But um. Yeah, hopefully we see what Fantasia can can do and all those new boys as well. The Ashton Moyer might make a debut. I've only seen him in the VFL game. He looked okay. He doesn't look like there, but always might come back. He hasn't had a whole preseason. Durden hasn't had a preseason. It's just it's going to be very uh very controversial with the lineup this week, but. Mm. We believe in Vossi. He he took us to a prelim last year, but I just I don't think I think our statement comes against Richmond in round one next week against in front of ninety thousand fans. Yep. Do you think like making the prelim was? I mean, as it was a as test. It was... it was a good test for us. I was there. It was a good test for us. We look. We 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 had to get out on the block and we did we hit that we hit the ground running king the first five goals in the gabba that's what we had to do mm-hmm. but you could just see it's just we were we were tired they had more obviously they didn't play the week before they had more run they had more carry it was their ground and it's just look i would have i would feel more more better if it was in melbourne but it's you're going up to their to their home ground there it's their household no one beats brisbane over there unless they have a very bad day and it's just yep. i feel like yeah it's carlton's gonna yeah it's they're gonna they're gonna have a wake-up call on friday night carlton so they better yeah it might it might go two ways it might go down as an 80 point win but it just I, <laughs> Jeez. I, well that, I that's 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 going to be a fun watch along for me, Johnny Carl. It will. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. Yeah, sitting sitting with Brisbane supporters on Friday night. It's not going to be fun, but um. That's yeah. it. Are you going over to the game? No, nah, no, nah, my mates all Brisbane here, so we're just watching the game here. Nice, um, nice. So yeah, it's just I was I was going to, but I have uh, have not good memories from Gabba last year in the prelim, <laughs> so. Yeah. Is it? I'll do, take you, that do you think that you know them making the prelim last year was like it was a massive jump? Like you haven't made finals in a few years, and to go straight to a prelim, do you think that was, you know, in the long run, is that better for the club? Should they have gone? Not not it was, that, you know, I'm not saying that they should was, have gone prelim, but like what I'm trying to say is like, is it too? Was it too fast? Is it gonna digress yeah, the development? I really, Look, it was a fairy tale ending, right? Like it was a fairy tale ending after round, I think thirteen it was after losing to Essendon. We were fifteenth on the ladder, bottom four. No one saw us making top eight. No way. No one saw us going to a prelim. It was a fairy tale ending, kicking two goals in the last two minutes of both games to win the game. You know what I mean? Like eight is mm. with thirty three seconds against Melbourne to make us to the prelim. I feel like that's just going to be an excuse. I feel like fans are just going to say, "No, nah, the boys made prelim this year." It's okay if you lose by forty points on round one. All those supporters are just going to go, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Look, we made prelim last year. Let's just be happy. They might be good next week. I just, it's just going to be an excuse of what Brisbane does to us this week on Friday night. So, yeah, I feel like if we're going to be a real, a real threat to the top four, this is the team that we have to be knocking off. I'm if we want to take, if we want to be serious, we need to knock off Brisbane at the gap, and I just don't see that. Yeah. So if, if Carlton do win, you it would be jaw dropping. That's what I'm gonna say. It will be. It will be without Walsh and Weedering as well. I'm like that. They would. I know I was shocked last year, but this would just be a big <laughs> shock if we somehow managed to go over to the Gabba and beat Brisbane, and they have their full side as well. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people. I know KP always tells me not to wish any teams good luck, but good luck. Right. <laughs> We're going to need it. We're going to need it. 
All right. Well, look, there's two more games. Um, we'll run through these ones. So Gold Coast versus Richmond at um, at Heritage Bank Stadium, which is the Gold Coast Suns ground. Uh, I I think uh, Richmond are not. I think they're. Are they in a? Re- do you think they're in a rebuild? I'm not sure, but Gold Coast for me, I just think they're going to be too strong at home. I think they've got some good players. I know. The King did say that they didn't look good against GWS, but I just think against Richmond, I don't think Richmond are as strong anymore. They've you know they've lost a lot of players. They've got a new coach. I saw this you know Gold Coast as well, I guess. But yeah, I just think it's Gold Coast's time this year, and yeah, I reckon Gold Coast. What do you reckon, guys? Well, I'm going to go for. Um... Oh, what am I doing? I think I think I'll go Richmond. Um just purely for the fact that um I'll I'm going I'm going by the trial game. Um I wanted to see a little bit more from, from the Gold Coast, something. Um I think I think they're gonna need if he's gonna steal a few more Richmond players, then maybe he does that to get a bit more a bit more strength into the side. Um but yeah, I'll stick with I'll stick with Richmond just purely on it's round one, and the Gold Coast sometimes take a bit of a bit of a time to get going. So round, and we need to round, see round zero, not round one. Round, round sorry, zero. round zero. Yes, round <laughs> opening round. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Yes, and um, yeah. So so let's see what he can do. Um, with with the new team and uh, what tricks he's, he's brought from Richmond. And, um, yeah, but I'll stick with Richmond for this one. Wild. All right, Johnny G, what do you reckon? Gold Coast or the Richmond, what do you reckon? Uh, gee, this is a tough game to pick, really. It's not – it doesn't – you know, on paper, it doesn't look like an exciting game to watch. Uh, I think Gold Coast will be favourites at home because um, – I think Richmond are in its sort of funny stage of, yeah, like you said, rebuilding to to just maybe sliding down even more down the ladder. Um, I'm not a fan of Richmond's midfield. Um, Dusty's obviously older now. I think Bolton's their live wire. They need really him to really um, click in this game for them to get the points. Uh, but look, I tell you what, there's been hype about Gold Coast. I just don't get it. I can't. Yeah, like. I'm trying to pick their good players, you know. I mean, they've got two, yeah. I think Anderson's Rao, but are they A plus list players? I'm just I'm not not too Flanders. sure. Flanders is good. I mean, Flanders, what he played a decent second half of the season last year, and all of a sudden he's just an A grade midfielder. Like it's um, yeah. and plus, uh, Hardwick took a while to get Richmond going in the first place when he was there. So. <sighs> I'll go Gold Coast just at home. But I'm not confident um, just because I think Richmond are poor. But honestly, I can't see Gold Coast being in the eight this year. They may prove me wrong. Um, but uh, this is probably the least game of the week that I'll be excited to watch about. So, yeah, I'll go Gold Coast by a couple goals. Johnny Carlton, what's uh, your uh, predictions well, here, man? Obviously, you know how Port Adelaide hates Adelaide. I cannot stand Richmond. And I am so happy they are finally on the way down where they belong. Um, as I said, look, I, I, I'm not going to tip Richmond this year unless they're playing West Coast. I, they, I saw them in the, both their practice matches. Richmond looked horrible, and I'm, I'm so happy about it. Um, <laughs> I feel like Gold Coast will win this week. Uh, I feel like Dima will get his payback, and he should. Like, Dima... Hopefully, I can't stand which one. As I said, I'm going to say that so many times during the year. Um, they're, they're, they're no good. They're in their real rebuild stage. I feel like West Coast might even beat them this year. Um, yeah, as I said, I just... No no good for me now. Cochin's gone. Rewald's gone. Lynch looks like a like a tree that doesn't move. Um, <laughs> Dusty's getting too old now. All his tattoos are showing. Um, as I said... What Johnny G said, I reckon it's just Bolton as their live wires. As I said, I don't, apart from Bolton and Rioli, I just 
No good. So, yeah, no. Look, King of the North said that he didn't like how Gold Coast was in their practice game. I saw Gold Coast against Brisbane. They only lost by two points against Brisbane at the Gabba in their first practice match. I thought Gold Coast was really good against Brisbane. I thought Rao, Anderson, Flanders, all those boys stood up. Bailey Humphrey's a kid that's just going to shine this year too. I reckon Wits is probably one of the good... I I reckon Wits is one of the most underrated ruckmen in the comp. The way Wits does his ground ball move is... I just feel like Gold Coast is going to be a weird team this year. I reckon they're going to be good, but then I reckon there's going to be games that they're going to be bad. But I just feel like Gold Coast are going to have a party and they're going to they're going to be one and zero after this week. And uh, yeah, Richmond will probably be zero and five in the first five rounds, which is very exciting. So well, there we go. <laughs> there you go, far out. Well, I don't well, love Richmond on this panel. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a hater of Richmond like John, Johnny Carlton is, but. Yeah, I can. They are going to struggle. They are going to struggle, hundred percent. I hate. I hate Richmond. They beat us in the grand final, and I'll never forget it. They bottom four this year, where they belong. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Well, look, there is one more game, one more game to talk about, and that is uh, the la- the other prelim from last year. Uh, GW. Oh, sorry, which wrong one? Uh, GWS. Versus Carlton, got, uh, Collingwood guys. Carlton, where am I going? I, I haven't slept for like I've had, I've been up since four a.m. So sorry. But GWS versus Collingwood. Um, this is this is shaping up to be a big game. Uh, I like the way GWS play. Um, I like the way Collingwood play. So yeah, hopefully it's it's a close game. It's going to be hard to pick. It is at their home. I can't go past the premiers. Uh, Kenya, um, you know, Nick Dacos, what a star. Um, you know, you've got so many good players, man. Um, is McStay back yet? I'm not sure. Is he back? Uh, he's, he's, got, he's, gone for the, he's gone for the year. He did his ACL. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Pendlebury, Quaynor, I just love these players, man. Um, I think they're great. Um, uh, yeah, but then you look at GWS, you know, the Toby Green, the Toby Green Tom Green, um, you know, they've got some good players as well, man. Um, look, it's going to, look, I hope it's a close game, but Collingwood know how to win close games. They they proved, they proved that like the last couple of years um, and last year was no exception. They're definitely... Yeah, going to be up there this year, and I think they're going to win by. I reckon I'm going to say one point again. It's going to be another one pointer, one point game to Collingwood. So that's my prediction. I and I'm actually looking forward to watching this one. So, Johnny Carlton, what do you reckon, man? What do you reckon this one? Um, I'm going Giants. Giants, okay. Um, I reckon. Look, I reckon Collingwood are going to have their hangover. Um, after their granny win last year. I don't rate Collingwood. I'm I'm sorry it might be a Carlton perspective, but I don't rate Collingwood. Oh really? I don't think I don't think they have their I don't think they have the players. I, I looking at last year it's the, they won so many games that they shouldn't have and it's just it's just all because of luck. I, I feel like it was all luck. Um obviously you you get like the Nick Dacos and stuff like that, but I just feel like if they're not moving they're they're no good. Like as I said, GWS came to Collingwood last year in the prelim. They nearly beat them. I reckon if you look at that GWS Collingwood game in the last three minutes, so many free kicks should have gone to GWS. Mm-hmm. Yep, so many free kicks should have gone to GWS. And obviously, their preseason, they've looked the most dangerous team in the preseason. GWS, they have. They they're just flying. And I reckon GWS are going to be top four this year. I do have them in my top four. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I just feel like GWS are, are just going to win this. I feel like Collingwood are going to have their hungover, and I just feel like when they come back to round one next week in the MCG and they hold up their premiership flag, I feel like that's where they'll get their season beginning off to and do all that stance and all that Collingwood like pregame thing. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like GWS are going to win this week. I feel like it's at Giant Stadium as well. They're a good team over there, and I just feel like they're going to go one step one step closer this year, the Giants. So, yeah, I'm GWS for me. 
King of the North, what do you reckon, man? What, what yep, do you think? I agree. I agree with Johnny. Um, I'm tipping um, uh, GWS. I'm very impressed with their preseason. Um, they're a well drilled, well put together team. They play for each other. Um, and I think they'll go a long way. They'll be up there with Brisbane. Um, getting excited to see Brisbane and GWS play each other and see how good those two teams are against each other as well during the year. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, GWS for sure, and uh, lots of wins during the year. Awesome, awesome, Johnny G. Last tip of the night. Yeah. What do you reckon, man? Yeah, I think GWS win here. They're they're really looking like an all round good team from their ruck, midfield, defence, and forward line. They got good players all around. Um, they got Green in the middle. He could be a Brownlow year for him. Um, you got Toby Green up front. I reckon he could give. Uh, Coleman a shout this year or just push him you know I'll even top three uh, um, I do like the defence Taylor's coming good uh, you got Himmelberg back there um, you got Iden you got, they're just good players man um, Haynes and they're you know even midfielders even up and coming midfielders like Callahan is going to be great um, so look I think GWS has got the great list um, I've tipped them in my top four predictions in the previous video as well uh, Collingwood, I think they're the oldest team now in the league, I believe. But I think they're they the are. oldest list. So yeah. is that concern? I, I know we all thought um, when Geelong had that oldest list at that time that they weren't going to make the eight, but they did. Um, look, I think Collingwood will be good this year, but I reckon they've sort of passed that peak. They, they, they were just good enough in their peak just to beat uh, Brisbane by four points in the GF last year. They just got over the line. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a decline from Collingwood this year. I still think they'll make the eight. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to be as good as last year. So, um, yeah, GWS for me, I really like them this year. I fancy them. Um, yeah, that, that win, that'll start the year off with, with W, I reckon. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I, I picked any... My picks are all different to yours, eh? <laughs> no, we all picked Gold Coast. That's, that's, that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, the only, that's the only one. Anyway, anyway, we'll see what happens, guys. Look, footy's back. I'm excited. Uh, even though it's a shit opening round zero, round zero it's still footy. So um, it's been good to see everyone's team. Now, before we do go, before we do go, I want to know, Johnny Carlton, what is... Your premiership, like your grand finalist, and what's your who's going to win the premiership? We want to know your predictions. Who's going to win the Brownlow, the Coleman, and if you want to add in the uh, Nab Rising Star, give us because we we did our predictions last show. You went on the show, so um, give us a quick rundown of what you think, and then we'll uh, get out of here. Uh, all right, yeah. So my minor premiers are Brisbane. Um, I reckon Brisbane are going to win the flag this year as well. Um. I reckon West Coast are going to win the Wooden Spoon again this year. Um, uh, Coleman. I reckon Nick Lark is going to win the Coleman this year. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. I reckon yeah. I reckon Nick Lark is going to... He was there. He was in the top five last year. He was there. Um, I just feel like a bit a bit more better now with North Melbourne getting these good picks. I reckon Sheasel, Colby, um, all those boys now. Hitting Larky, I reckon Larky would. Uh, I reckon Larky won the Coleman and the Brownlow. Brownlow. I'm, I reckon it's Golden. I reckon it's Errol Golden this year. I reckon I've loved Golden last year too. I reckon it's Errol Golden. That's what Johnny G. Johnny G said that. Man. I reckon it's Errol Golden this year for the Brownlow. Um, I just feel like he's going to get that forty disposal games, and I feel like he's just going to get that. Even if it's not a goal game, I feel like it's going to be a 39 disposal game. But I reckon he's going to get like that 33 disposal two goal game mm. um, for Sydney. I reckon he's just, I just don't see anyone pulling up votes for Golden, to be honest. So I reckon it's Errol Golden. I think it's his year. And uh, I don't know what else, but my top four this year I had was Brisbane, GWS, Melbourne, Collingwood. They're all my top four. Who do you reckon's so, gonna drop out? Who's yeah. dropping out of the, the eight? Who's dropping out of the eight? So they're all my four, and then I had Adelaide fifth. Let's go. I Carlton, I Carlton sixth. 
I had Essendon seventh, and I had Gold Coast eighth. Where's Port Adelaide, man? Yeah. <laughs> and you live. You left St Kilda out as well. Yeah, yeah. Don't rate the Saints. Um, my bottom four was West Coast, Frio, Richmond, and North Melbourne. They were my bottom four. Right. What, give us your reason why you think Port's not going to make the eight. Give me, give me, give me your reason. Um, yeah, as I said, I just feel, I just feel like Port Adelaide get a big injury start of the season, midway through the season. I just don't think there's. Obviously, Pal Pepper's gone, but I just I feel like it's only Butter and Rosie to be honest. I just look, you've got Marshall and George and Georgie Artis and all that type of boys as well. But I just feel like I just feel like it's going to take time for Port Adelaide to get used to their they're they're bringing in a lot of players. Um, obviously losing Dersma. I don't know. You've lost Fantasia. You lost. I think you lost. We lost another person as well. We lost, we, lost, we lost Tom Jonas. He was our captain. Jonas, we lost, yeah. We lost uh, Lysette. Lysette as well. Yeah. I just feel like with all these new players, I feel like Jordan Sweet's going to have a good year for Port Adelaide. I feel like Port Adelaide are going to be between that ninth to 12th range, but I just don't. I just feel like there's teams that are more hungrier than Port Adelaide this year. So, well, sorry, well, Chris. I know, you, I know you don't want to hear it. I know you like Carlton as well. I do like Port Adelaide. I, I, I like to sing their song before the game too. Um, but I just, yeah, I just don't see Port Adelaide making the eight this year. As I said, I just feel like they're going to be the team that disappoints me this year. So, Okay, I've got, I got one question for you, Johnny. Which which coach is going to go first? Oh. <laughs> I reckon it's going to be... I'm going West Coast. I reckon it's Adam Simpson. I reckon wow. Yeah. We all said we all said Longmire. For Sydney. No, no, not Longmire. Long no. is it Long Muir from Frio? Muir for uh, Frio. Frio. Uh, Frio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now Frio, Frio are gonna have a terrible year as well. I I think both Perth teams are gonna be in the bottom four this year. But um <laughs> I don't know, just something about Essendon. I, I know it, I can't stand Essendon as well, but I just feel like they're gonna to be top eight this year. Hopefully they lose. Round um in the first in the first final as well. Hopefully they do. <laughs> um, and, so and, what days, about, and what about Bevo for uh, the Bulldogs? Yeah, look, Bulldogs and St Kilda, they're the funny teams for me. Um, I just I just see them mid mid range. I, I I feel like they're the like the they're like the Wolves of the Premier League. <laughs> they're just they're just like a mid card table team. I just I. As I said, just like yeah, like the Wolves and Brighton type type of teams, they just stay in the. They won't get top six and they won't be relegation. I just feel like they're in that that yeah, in that group round. Yeah, with like St Kilda yeah. Bulldogs and Port Adelaide. There, I reckon this year. Um, I reckon Hawthorne might be up there a bit this year, but don't see them going up against more than fourteenth. Um. North, as I said, yeah, just Bulldogs and St Kilda, just that mid-card table team. Um, don't see anything excitement. Bont might win the Brownlow as well. I do have Bont second, but I just, yeah, just besides... I'll pick, I'll pick Bont for the Brownlow. Yeah, but besides Bulldogs, yeah, just seeing St Kilda in the preseason, seeing Bulldogs in the preseason, they just don't look like they're top eight teams at the moment. I just feel like mm. Adelaide, Essendon and Gold Coast are going to be more hungry this year, so... Very happy with the Adelaide choice at number yeah. five. And they've just got to win. They've just got to win away from home. They only lost games by a couple of points last year. So that's all we, All I've got to do is got to well, win a few finals. more games away. We should have played finals if it wasn't for that game. And you'll be up there. That's right. And I, 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 as I said, I've talked to a lot of Carlton supporters. I think I have them the lowest out of everyone. I have them at six. I don't have, I don't see any other Carlton supporters having them lower than six. I, they all have them top four, Carlton, but... I don't know, for some reason, I'm not. For some reason, I don't think we're top four contenders this year. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got Carlton seventh. So, just good. Thinking. Good to hear. Good to hear. At least I know we're not top four. I can't, even, <laughs> I can't even remember where I had Carlton, man. I've got it here. Chris, you have to get Chris C top three. Here we look. I had Carlton third. Third, and I had uh, Brisbane Lions first, Port second. Fourth, Collingwood, Giants fifth, 
Port second. Port second, man. We're going. We're, man, I'm telling you now, man. There's no excuses, you know, man. We've got we've got the players, bro. I know if we I know what Johnny Carlton saying. If we lose, if we lose one of those players, yes, it's going to be tough, right? But we've got a, there's a in, in, in the midfield there's not much depth, but like on the other lines there's a, a bit of depth now. We got Ruck, we got backward line. So I understand what you're saying, Johnny 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 Carlton, but. I hope we can prove you wrong there. Can and they, can, they can't say they they can't say Ken after re-signing him for two years. Can yeah, they, no. this year. And uh, so, my rising my rising stars that guy from the Bulldogs, Sanders Saunders. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I reckon he's yeah he's a jet. I reckon he's going to be their rising star this year. I reckon he's going to help Bont a little bit in the midfield. I Looks had like the Adelaide did. young one as my rising star, Curtin, didn't I, Johnny? Curtin. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. I hope you're right, King and I really hope you are. <laughs> well, there you have yeah, it, sorry. guys. Sorry, go, Johnny. Sorry. So, yeah, sorry, Chris. See, I know as much as you want me to put Adelaide in there, just yeah, just don't see them in there. Sorry. Put on a downtrend, Chris. You know they've lived so <laughs> last year. It's going to continue on to this year. Do you know, you I know think, I, and I, I, I think Adelaide might win both showdowns as well. I just don't oh. see in showdown. <laughs> it must, it must be a national pick on Chris Day today or something. I Lovely. just hope, Port, I just hope Port Adelaide win when I'm in there in Adelaide in the next month against Essendon. I just hope they beat Essendon in Adelaide, and I'll be happy. You know what's funny? Gather yeah, I'm, I'm gather coming around. to gather around. Yeah, so there's. There's nine games there. I'm going to six out of nine, so I only missed three oh, yeah. games. Nice. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to the Gold Coast and GWS game. So, yeah, I'll be in Mount Barker for that one. So, it'll be good. Yeah. yeah. But you know what's funny? Yeah, was... You know what's funny, guys? Johnny G said this exact same thing last year, and we made the eight. So, it's, <laughs> you know. You know... But well, you know how Johnny Carlton hates Richmond? I hate Port. So, it's... yeah. It's that kind of love. <laughs> you got to stay confident, Chris. It's like oh. it's like it's like Spurs for me. I just don't want to see them all the way at the top. I just can't stand Tottenham. Ugh. I'm a Spurs. I'm a Spurs fan. I'm a Spurs fan. I know you are. Have it, have it on both sides. Worst, <laughs> worst decision of my worst decision um, of your life, Chris. Yeah, my dad used to go for him, so that's why I, I picked them. But. Terrible. If it Terrible. makes you feel better, my my beautiful partner, she's a Ch- Chelsea fan, so that makes you feel better. Well, that's good news. <laughs> good news. <laughs> but guys, look, all I can say is thank you, guys. It's been it's been a great night, um, Johnny Carlton. It was good to have you back on the show. Um, thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, hopefully, we can get you on weekly. Now, I was talking to you before. When you can't make a weekly, maybe we can have you say a clip about Carlton and put you on, and you can just quickly talk about Carlton. So hopefully, yeah, you can get that going. Um, okay. But yeah, but yeah, it was a good night. Good luck. Good luck to all your teams. King of the North. It's always uh, don't say that. Yeah. Don't say that. The uh, JP hates the it when you North. say that. Good luck to all the other teams. You, you don't mean <laughs> it, Chris. You don't mean it. You only want to wish for Adelaide good luck. You yeah. don't mean it. I yeah, know. really, he doesn't He hates me. You probably only wish Carlton good luck, but the, you don't wish all the other teams good luck. But let's be honest. Yeah, you're probably right, but you know, <laughs> you know, I do, I do try and be a nice guy, but nice guys don't, don't always finish uh, first; they always finish last. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think my uncle's think... a Carlton fan, so we've got a lot of Carlton in my family. You do. Yeah. Well, they're all, Sturt, they're all Sturt supporters. Yeah, they're all Sturt, so they're all Carlton. They're like sticking yeah. to the double blues team. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, guys, look, thank you so much for coming in. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you're watching anywhere around the world, wherever you're watching. But yes, yeah, like, share, subscribe. Check out. Um, hold on. So check out our new merch, guys. Get the Con t-shirt, get the Hess t-shirt. Give us the stats, King. There we go. We will be back this week for the Watch Along on Thursday. And we'll be back on Friday. We're going to be in the studio with KP. Not a, he's not a massive footy fan, but we're still going to make him watch some footy. So, so yeah, guys, Watch Along's coming up. And we'll be back next week with this show wrapping up 
and wrapping up the opening round and previewing round one. Hopefully Johnny Carlton can be part of it again. Johnny G, Johnny Carlton, King of the North. Any final words before we go? Go Blues. Go Blues. Go Blues. <laughs> go the power. Come on, power. <laughs> All right, boys. Take care. Spiky here. We'll see you in the next one. Stay hunky. See ya. See you guys. Yeah.